Today we're out in the shop, and a couple of weeks ago I built this uh, sander. It's a thickness sander. It's powered by uh, a simple electric hand drill. And I was using it today to set the thickness on my Whirligig blades so that they will fit nicely in the hubs and be nice and tight for, uh, for gluing. You don't want them too loose. You want a good, good contact with the wood and you want them to look smooth. And the one, another reason you want these to be the same thickness is because if one's thick and the other is thin, then you're gonna get a lopsided blade and it's not gonna blow in light winds. So I have this thickness planer and I built it a couple of weeks ago and I've been using it and as I was using it, I realized that I built it wrong. I was, I was lifting and lowering the drum instead of the floor. I decided to put a hinge on it and lift and lower the floor it would be much easier because then, then the axle stays aligned with the drill. So today that's what we're going to talk about, uh, my modifications to this and the improvements. The drum on this is just a piece of two inch PVC pipe. I think any plain old sandpaper that you buy in the hardware store, wrap it around there, and I'm, I've tried a couple methods. I've tried hot glue on this, but uh, the best I find is this Easy Tack uh, repositional adhesive. It's Krylon 7020. I got it at Michaels or one of the craft stores. But you just spray this on like a paint can, and then you just wrap your wrap your sandpaper around there. It lasts a pretty good long time. PVC pipe is pretty easy to cut. Drill, you don't want to overwhelm your, your drill with too much sanding area. It'll bog it down, overheat, and it'll wear out. So I came up with a two inch diameter and about five inches wide. You can cut it with a hacksaw. And if it comes out uneven, you can sand it. My Whirligig hubs, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a hub in here. And the hole saw put a quarter inch hole. For my axle, I'm going to use a quarter twenty piece of threaded rod that you can get. I think it's eight and a half inches. And then I have a, a these bearings are three quarter by one quarter bearings. So let's go out to the shop where, where I have the drill press set up, and we'll cut these. Okay, we're back in the shop. I've got the uh, little bit top drill press here, and I'm going to use it to cut the. Uh, I don't know you call them donuts, the donut center. So, as you can see, I already I cut one out. And this is just a piece of three quarter inch uh, plywood. These come in a, a set, most of them come in a set with lots of different sizes. So, I had to choose one, I didn't have one exactly two inches because these are measured by the outside diameter, which is the size of your hole, not the size of your plug. They're made for putting uh, doorknobs indoors. So it's for the size of the hole is how these are measured. So uh, you're going to use the plug so you have to get one a little larger and then you probably have to sand it down. But you can put a uh, quarter inch bolt through the center and hold it on a sander and sand it down so it's a nice tight fit in here and then glue it in. Alright, there's our donut for the center of the, uh, it's, it's almost there. But I'll have to sand that down a little bit. And of course I'll make two of these, one for each end. And then the threaded rod goes right through here. You can almost just pound it in, have it friction fit. This is a Bremen uh, quick clamp. And the quick clamps are real expensive. I got this at Harbor Freight. This one, uh, they're guaranteed and they, they work. I bought, I bought a cheapy one uh, somewhere, the black ones at like Lowe's, and it didn't last, it didn't last a couple of weeks. But this one, uh, so far it's good, good. What I'm doing here is uh, I've drilled, I've drilled uh, all the holes to hold the frame for the sander drum and the little, uh, three inch uh, two by four blocks to hold the drill in here. I clamped everything in place 
wiggled it around until it was exact with the drill in place. Clamped everything. You see all the clamps on here. Got it all lined up and tightened down the clamps. Flipped it over. Drilled the screws. Drilled the screw holes and then screwed everything in. And that way I know that uh, the drum axle of the drum is lined up perfectly with the drill. It goes in uh, upside down. The reason I did that is so it would be easy access to the to the button, the on button, and the lock. So you could, when you, you could just turn it on and leave it running. This on this uh, drill powered sander, I found this. Uh, here we go. I mean, there's a Harbor Freight near me, so this is a Warrior. Uh, it was a Harbor Freight drill. They're like twenty two ninety five. It was on sale for seventeen something. So I bought it, and it's uh, it doesn't have variable speed, but it does have uh, reversing, and it has a chuck, a keyed chuck. And that's important because uh, I've I've done this uh, sander with a uh, hand tightening chuck, and it just won't stay, it won't stay uh, tightened for very long at all. So I wanted a keyed chuck, so I could tighten it down and have it stay. So that's why I got this uh, Warrior. And I mean, 17 bucks. <laughs> Basically, it's just a motor to power my sander. Handle, it comes with a handle that goes around this collar here. So that makes a perfect uh, grip for my, for my sander. Because that, I can just cut this hole here, the exact size for this uh, collar, nose, whatever you want to call it. it. Slides right in there nice. And it holds it. I don't know if you can see that the way it's got a collar on it. Look sight through there, you can see that uh, the axle lines right up. Pretty good there because I shimmed it. I have to trim that shim off because I just stuck it in there. And there's another couple handy things here I want to show you. So this is the This was a quarter 20 bolt that I just, I, I made sure it had a shank on it, a smooth part. So it was probably a, uh, a two inch quarter 20 bolt with a shank. You see the shank, the smooth part? That allows the drill chuck to have something to grip good against, grip, instead of having to grip on the thread. And to connect this, uh, I just cut the head off with a hacksaw of that bolt. So it's about an inch and a half long now. And then there's a this little threaded coupler. I guess that's what you call it. It's in a one inch threaded coupler, quarter 20. So one end goes on here, like this. And the other end, this end goes You tighten that all up real nice and snug. And then I have, I have a jam nut here. So tighten it against the jam nut. And then when the axle comes in, when the uh, drill comes in, over here, now you can see here where that the drill chucks uh, jaws are clamping onto the smooth part of that quarter 20 bolt. You can just use this as a regular drum sander and then if you have rough spots just sand it, sand it here. It's about, you know, curved. These curved parts. Sand it like that on the um, and use this freehand. I'm going to mount this. Uh, this is going to be my four, and it's going to be mounted with a hinge, and we'll do that uh, in a minute.
of these line nuts go on the bottom. As that comes through, that will lift, that screw will lift the board. Next I'm going to just drill these, uh, drill the hinges. found out that in order to, if I screw it in now, I'll have to take the cylinder out. So I'm going to have to take the, uh, the whole cylinder assembly, the sanding drum assembly off before I put the screws in for the hinge. So do that now. Well here's where we are so far. The base of three quarter plywood and uh, this chunk out of here, you really don't need that. This is just the piece I had, 15 by 11. Uh, this, is, this part is to hold the drill. So I'm taking this off, the drum off, and it supports with the bearings to allow me to put, put the floor piece on, put the hinge. All right, there it is. Uh, probably ought to take this apart so you can see how that goes. We'll do that. I'll do that in a minute. So right now, so the hinges go here. All right, drill coming through here. Yeah. Okay. So I'll mark where the hinge goes. I'm going to drill some pilot holes for the uh, little wood screws to go in here. Even though it's labeled wood screws. Get right in the center. altitude of the floor and that gives me the gap. See the gap in here. And that will allow me to sand my Whirligig blades to the exact thickness that I need. You know, if you build ship models, and I've built a few uh, boats, model boats out of wood, and you like to plank them, you know, that's, this, uh, this is a great uh, gadget for doing the same thing, getting an exact thickness and uniform for making planks for your model Chris Craft or what have you. Parts A and B. Put a little bit around the hole. I don't want to get any in the threads. If you're ever gluing anything, epoxying it, you don't want to get the threads. Just pack a little uh, Vaseline in there, and that'll keep the threads clean, uh, keep the glue from sticking and messing up your threads. I think I got enough clearance on this. I don't, I don't have to worry about that today. gluing these because on the old setup I had these came loose. It's inevitable that when you get epoxy on your fingers the phone will ring. That's a crappy piece of plywood that keeps chipping. Thank you.
I'll let that dry for five minutes or whatever. Dandy tip for you, if you get the epoxy all over your fingers, just uh, pop open a jar of uh, acetone and uh, wipe your tip, fingertips with it. And uh, if you don't have any uh, acetone, you can get this at Lowe's, but if you don't have any, uh, go get your uh, fingernail polish remover. It's got acetone in it. Uh, it's diluted probably 50 or 70 percent. It's not as strong as pure acetone, but it, uh, it does have acetone in it and it will help unstick uh, epoxy. And uh, by the way, it will soften super glue. If you get super glue, get your fingers stick, pick a little uh, fingernail polish, a fingernail polish remover, and uh, it has acetone in it. It will soften super glue. The soaps are drying. And the next step will be to put the drum back on. Here's the bearing. It's a three quarter OD by one quarter ID. And so you can see I used a three quarter spade bit to just countersink. They're quarter inch uh, thick. So I countersink the wood by a quarter inch uh, once I get the help the hole accurately located. That makes the sanding drum spin nice and smoothly. And since there's a quite a bit of force on it when you put the wood through there, uh, I, I thought the ball bearings would be the best way to go. Uh, minimizing that force and allowing the little drill to power the drum sander without clogging down. You see the, the way I've got the nuts in there? The jam nuts against the Uh, against the wooden plugs. There, now you can see it. Okay, I've got the parts laid out like they would appear when uh, in order here. So you got four quarter 20 bolts, you got an eight and a half inch threaded rod, you got this little coupler, and this is a quarter 20 bolt with the smooth part, shank, the head's cut off. That's to chuck with the drill. And then the two bearings, the PVC pipe. This one's got the sandpaper wrapped around it with the two hole saw plugs in there, glued in. So the axle screws in there. And the bearings, I made them go on the outside. The bolts lock, lock the cylinder to the shaft. Two outer bolts hold the shaft between the bearings. You see how that works? It's pretty straightforward. If you have an old electric motor, uh, you could mount on here, mount a little pulley. Mount a pulley on here and then just have this part. By the way, I mounted, I mounted the screws. See the blind nuts? The epoxy's dry. So that you can see how the blind nuts hit here. Uh, I mean, these bolts, and that adjusts the altitude of the floor relative to the sanding drum. Could mount a pulley here. Uh, you can buy them. Ace Hardware has them. Uh, they're pretty expensive, but find a little pulley. I see them all the time at flea markets, and uh, a little pulley. Run it back to a, a V belt, and mount a motor back here. Put, you could put a, uh, just mount it on a bigger piece where you could screw your motor down, put a pulley on there. Simple. By the way, I have this oriented run. The drill comes in here. Got everything uh, ready to go back together. Putting the bearings back in. See how nicely that runs with uh, those bearings in there. Drum and the bearings all back together. Now I'm just going to attach this back to the frame. Here's the little coupler. When you get these right where you uh, want them, you can put a little tight little lock in there or something or you could put a lock nut. In my case I'm putting a lock nut on there. Keep it secure. 
jam one nut against the other. And also that's, you know, if you're having trouble getting a, uh, a threaded rod out, that's one way to do it. Perfect. Hope this lines up. Well, it's a little crooked here, but that'll straighten itself out. Ready to roll. Here's the adjustment for the thickness of your of your planks, or in this case, your whirly gig wings. <clears throat> so let's say you've cut these out on your table saw, and there you can see the table saw cuts in there, and they're they're not the exact thickness that you need. So by turning these screws uh, in, you close the gap, and by unscrewing them, you make the gap bigger. And you want to eyeball, you want to make sure they're even, so they're the same thickness on, on both sides of the drum. Now if you're going under, it's going to shoot out if you, uh, if you don't hold on to it. You could feed it from the back and then push it through, it'd probably be a better way. And then you'd want a, uh, a kind of a push stick, a flat push stick to push it through. A good idea would be to clamp this down so that it doesn't walk all over the place. That's better. You can see uh, I left this little lip on this workbench. It didn't call for it on the workbench video. The plans don't call for the this little one inch lip, but it sure comes in handy. It just and this is a great example of clamping stuff. Alright, here we go. leave it in there for too long it'll get these little divots in it. But there's that one. So that's a little tight in there. Give it a little adjustment. This one's a little heavier. Let's give it another shot. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> 